Yeah, DoorDash just increased the pay for you, the Dasher, on the earn by time mode, but you might be surprised, depending on market, that it might be actually the third pay increase. Of course, we're going to talk about that. Also, new verbiage changes, what the company's saying about the all-important customer tips, and maybe even more important, the peak pay per delivery bonuses and more in this video. Let's get into it. So in 2022, DoorDash introduced this new earnings model. Don't just get paid after every offer. Offer, you get the earnings. Offer, you get the earnings. But you could get paid on active hours, like when you're actually on assignments. Specifically, the moment when you accept an assignment to the moment that you finish and deliver that assignment. Now, introducing that, at least here in Pittsburgh, in September of 2022, you would be paid $12.25 per active hour. Now that increased March of 2023 to $13.50. Now there's some incentive pay shown in blue here on this example, but the standard pay increased to $13.50 per active hour. But the next change, April 2023, bumping $13.50 all the way up to $16.50 standard per active hour. So now in January 2024, the third pay increase that I've noticed in my marketplace and this new rate could give us clues about maybe your marketplace increasing active hourly pay. If they didn't do it already, it is now $17 per active hour. That's right, a 50 cent increase, but still an increase in the third one. And I know what you're saying here. Like, dude, A, that's your market. I don't have an increase. And B, 50 cents, really? All right, let me walk that back. Let me explain why this actually matters for your marketplace. But firstly, I need to correct myself. It's not actually $17 per active hour. It's actually... 1650. Well, no, that's not right. I just showed you. I saw it with my own eyes. It said $17 per active hour. Well, it also said 1650. So here's the next update that I just noticed. If you saw this sometime before, let me know when you saw this, but a verbiage change with earn by time. So DoorDash's support page says, talking about the earn by time option, while this rate may change throughout the day, once you start your dash, the hourly rate is locked in and will apply to the entire earn by time mode dash session. That, to my knowledge, was not there before. At least it wasn't there, I'd say, what, a year and a half ago? A year ago so yes it can be 1650 per active hour it can be 17 dollars how big is a swing how often does it change and it's the same sub segment you know your marketplace is broken down into different segments it's the same segment it's just different times of the day and it can change now next update for you in 2024 what about tips though because we've seen directly from the company that when announcing earn by time, they themselves outrightly said tips will be lower. So you're sending me the non-tipping orders or like literally the lowest tipping orders here in exchange for a guaranteed hourly rate DoorDash. But then the company in 2023 said, well, tips may be lower when it comes to your tips on earn by time as a DoorDash dasher. Now, January, at the time of filming this video, 2024, they say tips may be less frequent when you choose to earn by time. So they're still not saying outrightly like, Hey, it's going to be lower, but it might be lower. I kind of get what you're thinking. I feel the same thing. Like it's probably going to be lower. It's probably going to be at least a higher chance of no tipping orders or lower tipping orders. Let me know if you agree with that. Do you think that taking the hourly guarantee on earn by time is going to result in orders with less tips? And then you're just left with base pay $2 to $10 from DoorDash. But you're also able to get peak pay. But can you? Because March of 2023, DoorDash's support page said, quote, peak pay may not be available when you're earning by time. But I mean, peak pay is never guaranteed. It might always not be available, like earn by offer. There's no guarantee I'm gonna have peak pay. So is that what you're saying? Or are you saying like, yeah, we're probably not gonna offer peak pay when usually we'd offer peak pay on let's say earn by offer. So now, yeah, in 2024, there's a new verbiage, which 
is kind of the norm. Like going through their support pages, there's always little changes here. Taking things out, adding as far as the verbiage. It says, can I earn more with the guaranteed hourly active rate? Yes, this includes the peak pay incentive. You will earn the guaranteed hourly rate plus the peak pay incentive per active hour together shown in blue. Remember that example I showed you? It's the gray, like standard active hourly guarantee, and then the blue includes the promotional peak pay. Oh, like that one, what is that? 2250, plus I get tips on top of that. That seems pretty decent. What do you think? But still, I've said this before several times in 2023, and DoorDash, you should add this. I don't know why you wouldn't add this, so hopefully I'll see this in 2024. Why can't we see the scheduled hourly peak pay incentives? Because we can see the earn per offer, like the standard per offer bonus in the promotions tab. Why isn't there a little button or whatever toggle? Why can't we see the scheduled earn per time peak pay. All right, overall a verdict though, and I'm gonna give you a strategy of when to use earn by time, especially if that's, again, comment down below, because I need to compare that with what I have here in Pittsburgh. So are you seeing or have you seen an increase in your standard hourly guarantee? Number one on the surface level, obviously this is something that DoorDash is focusing on. This is at least here in Pittsburgh, okay? The third pay increase that we've seen on earn by time. While conversely, now that I think about it, there's been like no meaningful changes to peak pay other than, let me obviously, we'll say the tapering that we're tracking. That just means like slightly less per offer peak pay throughout 2023. And that's a trend we're watching into 2024. Base pay hasn't changed and they haven't changed that. It's still $2 to $10. And certainly, again, there hasn't been more peak pay, like more days, more dollars, more time slots, like just more of everything on the per offer peak pay. But if you're gonna offer just too low of orders, whatever it is, like too low base pay, like base pay only offers with no bonus pay, let's say, and maybe there's no customer tip. Like I would like to see a minimum base pay of $7 for any no tipping order. That combined with at least $1.20 a mile, 150 would be a good compromise, and 175 plus would be really good for drivers, combined with, again, a standard base fare that's higher than the current $2. Because what that does is if there's no bonus pay, if there's no customer tip on that order, it's gonna default to just the base pay. So you can see $2, $3, $4 orders. But anyway, let's talk about earn by time and when to use earn by time. So you're only paid when you're on assignments. I get it, it's the same as earn per offer, right? You're not getting paid, just sitting there. But earn by time, okay, when I'm on an assignment, when would I wanna get paid more for my time when maybe an assignment is longer, right? Because if I'm doing two pickups, like McDonald's, what, Wendy's two? Should we do McDonald's, McDonald's? McDonald's, McDonald's, okay? And earn per offer, it takes 10 minutes, whatever, yeah. Go to the lobby, it's ready, 10 minutes to go there and then pick it up. Say it pays like, I don't know, 10 bucks, whatever, right? And the miles are good, 10 bucks. For all in, what is that, like 15 minutes? Maybe, yeah, let's call it 15 minutes all in, 10 bucks. Now this order on earn by time, it is, let's say, what did I say? 10 minutes to the restaurant, five minutes to the customer. It's the same thing. It should be 15 minutes all in, but that 10 minutes to the restaurant and then, you know, picking up at the restaurant turns into 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes because it's like midnight and I thought for some reason the lobby would be open and it's not, like the doors are locked so you have to go through the drive-thru. So there's already a line at the drive-thru and I should have got in it, but I parked went to the door, it's locked, more and more cars are filling in because it's midnight, bar rush, and then I have to get in line, I have to wait in line behind like six other cars. So if there's hourly peak pay, let's say, let's say it is $17 here in Pittsburgh, right? But I have like a $4, which is really good hourly bonus, then I'm getting paid that entire time for the 30 minutes that the entire thing's gonna take. Technically, it would have been 35 minutes in our example, because we said five minutes from the restaurant to the customer, but let's just for easy math, say 30 minutes. So if it's 21 bucks, 
with the $4 hourly bonus pay. Originally would have been $17 an hour. Now it's $21. So just have that and you get paid that amount for 30 minutes. Or that would have been $10.50 for 30 minutes. So if you can get immediately an order, what we call ping pong orders, I make my drop, boom, I got another order immediately. So the timer of getting paid really never stops. The timer starts again, remember when you accept it to when you make the delivery. So it's starting again at the $21 with the bonus pay in our example. So if that next order takes 30 minutes, if it's farther driving, if it's tough parking, there's a line in the restaurant or another drive through line, then imagine like it's another 30 minutes, right? So the entire hour or basically all of the hour I'm on active time, then I get the full $21. So I need to ask you, is that when you would use earn by time? If you feel like the restaurant itself is gonna have wait times and or the drive through, just any delays in traffic, if you're driving rush hour, then you do not care if an order is delayed by any of those reasons because you're getting paid. If you can drive on especially the higher peak pay for earn by timely, let's say there's a $4 earn by time peak pay, but only a dollar peak pay on earn per offer when there's an imbalance there, and you think earn by time is gonna have long wait times for any of the reasons I just mentioned, that could be a fantastic situation to use earn by time. Now I average about $4, like four-ish, four is five dollars on an average customer tip driving food delivery. So, you know, we have a tracking spreadsheet on your drivermite.com. We got other courses and resources to help with most any side hustle. You can track that. Well, maybe my average tip is like $2 on earn by time. But if you're getting more peak pay on earn by time, you could still make more money. Do you drive, answer this down below in the comments, do you drive enough scenarios that it would make sense for earn by time? If you're like, hey, I don't have long drive throughs I don't take any fast food runs. I don't have any typical times where earn by time would make sense because I'm not waiting. So that's a concern though that I have. Well, are they taking away? Are they offering less peak pay on earn per offer and kind of nudging it over to earn by time? 